On the 28th of January, 1986, a cold winter morning, the world watched with bated breath as the Space Shuttle Challenger prepared for its mission. Aboard were seven crew members, including Krista McAuliffe, a school teacher set to become the first civilian in space. This historic flight symbolised hope and progress, capturing the imagination of millions. However, beneath the excitement lay unseen danger. Engineers had voiced concerns about the O-ring seals in the shuttle's solid rocket boosters, especially given the unusually low temperatures. The night before the launch, temperatures had plunged and ice had formed on the launch pad. Despite these warnings, NASA pressed ahead. As the countdown reached zero, Challenger roared to life and ascended towards the heavens. The crew's faces beamed with anticipation, unaware of the impending catastrophe. 73 seconds into the flight, disaster struck. A plume of smoke and flame erupted from the right booster, caused by the failure of an O-ring to properly seal. Within moments, the external fuel tank ruptured, leading to a catastrophic explosion. The shuttle disintegrated in a horrifying fireball, its remnants plummeting into the Atlantic Ocean. Spectators, including the families of the astronauts and schoolchildren watching live broadcasts, were left in stunned silence. Their joy turned to unimaginable grief. In the tense aftermath, investigations revealed that the tragedy was a result of both mechanical failure and flawed decision-making processes. The Rogers Commission, led by former Secretary of State William Rogers, uncovered the ignored warnings and the relentless schedule pressures that contributed to the disaster. The findings prompted widespread reforms within NASA, aiming to enhance safety and prevent such a disaster from occurring again. The Challenger disaster remains a sombre reminder of the perils of space exploration and the human cost of ambition, forever etched in the memories of those who witnessed that fateful day. Space Shuttle Program The Space Shuttle Program, officially known as the Space Transportation System, or STS, was a pivotal initiative by NASA running from 1981 to 2011. Its primary goal was to provide reusable spacecraft for various missions, including deploying satellites, servicing space stations, and conducting scientific research in orbit. Unlike traditional single-use rockets, the Space Shuttle was designed to be launched, returned to Earth, and then refurbished for subsequent missions, aiming to reduce the cost of space travel. The fleet consisted of five operational orbiters, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis and Endeavour. Each shuttle comprised three main components, the orbiter vehicle, a large external fuel tank and two solid rocket boosters or SRBs. The orbiter was the crew's primary living and working space and contained the cargo bay for carrying payloads. The external tank provided the necessary fuel for the main engines during launch while the SRBs delivered the initial thrust needed to escape Earth's atmosphere. The shuttles were notable for their versatility. They enabled significant advancements, including the deployment and repair of the Hubble Space Telescope, construction and maintenance of the International Space Station, and numerous scientific experiments conducted in microgravity. Overall, the space shuttles had many achievements, and was regarded as a success. However, as you are about to find out, the program faced significant challenges in the form of safety questions. These ultimately culminated in the disasters of Challenger in 1986 and Columbia in 2003, which led to rigorous safety overhauls and program revaluations. Re mission Brief The Space Shuttle Challenger's mission on the 28th of January 1986 designated STS-51L, aimed to deploy the Tracking and Data Relay Satellite B and the Spartan Halley spacecraft, which was intended to observe Halley's Comet. Notably, the mission also included the first civilian astronaut, Krista McAuliffe, a school teacher selected to promote science education as part of NASA's Teacher in Space project. McAuliffe's planned live lessons from space were highly anticipated, however, Significant safety concerns surrounded the mission, particularly regarding the O-rings in the solid rocket boosters. Engineers from Morton Theocle, the manufacturer of the SRBs, had raised alarms 
about the integrity of the O-rings in cold temperatures. The O-rings were crucial seals, designed to prevent hot gases from escaping the boosters and compromising the shuttle's structural integrity. On the eve of the launch, temperatures at Kennedy Space Center had plummeted to unseasonably low levels, dropping to an air temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius overnight. By the morning of the launch, scheduled at 11.38 local time, which had already been delayed by over an hour, the air temperature was a mere 2 degrees Celsius, still at least 10 degrees below the minimum suggested operating temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. Engineers specifically warned that the cold could harden the O-rings, reducing their effectiveness and increasing the risk of catastrophic failure. Despite these grave warnings, NASA management decided to proceed with the launch, prioritising scheduled adherence and public relations over the engineers' safety concerns. We have liftoff. At 11.38am, Eastern Standard Time, Challenger lifted off, its boosters roaring and trailing a massive plume of fire and smoke. The initial ascent appeared normal, and for the first minute or so, the shuttle climbed steadily towards the heavens. However, just 58 seconds into the flight, cameras captured a telltale puff of grey smoke emanating from the right SRB. This was the first visible sign of a catastrophic O-ring failure. As Challenger continued its climb, the small leak in the SRB rapidly grew. At T plus 73 seconds, a growing plume of flame was clearly visible, gushing out of the booster joint and directly impinging on the external fuel tank. This breach allowed superheated gas to escape, causing a structural failure of the right SRB attachment and a breach in the external tank. Liquid hydrogen and oxygen, now exposed to the intense heat, ignited. At T plus 73.6 seconds, the structural integrity of Challenger failed. The shuttle was enveloped in a fiery explosion as the external tank disintegrated. The force of the explosion caused the SRBs to fly off erratically, while the orbiter itself broke apart. This tragic event was broadcast live, witnessed by millions, including the families of the crew. The crew cabin, however, remained largely intact and continued its upward trajectory before beginning a fatal descent into the Atlantic Ocean. Analysis later revealed that some of the crew members survived the initial breakup, as indicated by the activation of personal emergency air packs. However, they would have been unconscious within seconds due to the rapid depressurization and the cabin's violent movements. Ultimately, the crew cabin hit the ocean surface at terminal velocity, around 207 miles per hour with an estimated deceleration of 200 g, creating a devastating impact. Unlike other spacecraft, the space shuttle did not have a crew escape system during powered flight, as NASA believed its highly expected reliability negated the need for one. While modified SR-71 Blackbird ejection seats and full pressure suits were used for early test flights, these were later removed for operational flights, and post-disaster modifications only allowed for escape in gliding flight, not during an ascent explosion. The seven astronauts aboard, Commander Francis Scobie, Pilot Michael Smith, Mission Specialists Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, Payload Specialist Gregory Jarvis, and civilian school teacher Krista McAuliffe perished. Recovery Efforts the recovery effort for the Challenger wreckage and crew remains was a complex and sombre operation. Following the tragic explosion, extensive search efforts were launched by NASA, the US Navy and Coast Guard in the Atlantic Ocean, where debris was scattered across a wide area. Robotic submersibles and sonar-equipped ships scoured the ocean floor, and divers conducted meticulous underwater searches. By March 1986, major portions of the orbiter including the crew cabin, were located and brought to the surface. The recovery of the crew remains was conducted with great care and respect. Identification of the astronauts' remains was completed by late April 1986, providing some closure for the grieving families. Funeral ceremonies for the Challenger astronauts were marked by profound national mourning. 
on the 20th of May 1986, a memorial service was held at Arlington National Cemetery, where a monument was dedicated to honour the seven fallen astronauts. Individual funeral services were also conducted, reflecting the personal wishes of the astronauts' families. These ceremonies were attended by high-ranking officials, including President Ronald Reagan, who delivered heartfelt eulogies. The Challenger disaster's recovery efforts underscored the heroism and dedication of the astronauts, while the funeral ceremonies provided the nation an opportunity to honour their sacrifice and to begin the process of healing from the tragedy. Legacy the Challenger disaster on the 28th of January 1986 generated an intense media response, with news outlets providing continuous coverage of the tragic event. The explosion, broadcast live to millions, shocked the nation and the world. Media focused not only on the disaster itself, but also on the human stories of the seven astronauts, including Krista McAuliffe, the first civilian teacher in space. Analysis and speculation about the cause of the accident dominated news cycles, along with sombre tributes to the crew. The White House responded promptly, with President Ronald Reagan addressing the nation on the evening of the disaster. His poignant speech honoured the bravery of the astronauts and aimed to comfort the grieving public, famously quoting the poem High Flight by John Gillespie McGee Jr. They slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Reagan also announced the formation of a commission to investigate the accident. The Rogers Commission, led by former Secretary of State William Rogers, was tasked with uncovering the cause of the Challenger disaster. The investigation revealed that the explosion was caused by the failure of an O-ring seal in one of the SRBs, exacerbated by unusually cold temperatures on the day of the launch. The report highlighted organisational and communication failures within NASA emphasising the need for significant changes. In response, the Space Shuttle fleet was grounded for two years and eight months, while the programme underwent investigation, redesign and restructuring. NASA implemented numerous safety improvements, including redesigning the SRBs and enhancing management practices to ensure better communication and risk assessment. The Space Agency also created new crew escape systems for future missions. The wider legacy of the Challenger disaster extends beyond these technical and procedural changes. It serves as a sombre reminder of the inherent risks of space exploration and the importance of vigilance and accountability. The tragedy fostered a renewed commitment to astronaut safety and continues to inspire educational initiatives honouring the legacy of the Challenger crew and their dedication to advancing human knowledge. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. And for more amazing tales and thrilling stories, don't forget to subscribe to Uncovered Secrets. Also, hit the bell icon to stay notified for every release.